Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Single Chronicles. I'm your girl, R.S. Lewis, a.k.a. Insomniac Writer. And today's episode, excuse me, is about entitlement and self-centeredness and a little bit of gossip. And how am I tying those things in? Well, I saw something on TikTok, I know, Toxic Central, about a man complaining about his ex or females losing weight. He asked the question, why do females lose weight to go to the beach for strangers, but not for, or, or why do they try to lose weight for an ex because the ex didn't like when they was fat, or, or why not, and why not do it for their, their mate, to keep their mate happy. So this girl Kaylee that I follow, she goes in on people hard, like she pulls no punches. And I realized the responses were a lot of people being butthurt. Now, I'm going to get into that. And before you think, oh, she's here she go going to hate on the men, I'm not. So sit back and relax. Now, if you are new here, make sure you like, heart, favorite, save this podcast. or, or And you can comment on Spotify, there it is. Now, if you're new here, welcome to the Secret Crime Group. that was a little longer intro than i anticipated because i really didn't have the intro i usually have a script for my intro um or notes and my notes are kind of like just here everywhere i don't i had a pen what the hell so anyway um I'm in the studio. First and foremost, I want to apologize because I went on social media and said, all right, y'all got a new Single Chronicles episode. And I went and edited that. I started listening to it <laughs> over the weekend. This was uh, Monday. Monday, I took off work and I said, oh, damn, I didn't upload the episode. Oh, my God. And I, listened, I was like, this is utter shit. Like, I rushed through it. I just... Just just rush through the whole episode. I'm sorry, this camera. And I don't even know why. I got footage of these podcasts and I'm not lo- uploading them on YouTube. I'll talk about that too. Now, um, I just did it just felt uh all over the place. It was kind of meh to me personally. So I was like, you know what? We just ain't gonna have no Halloween episode. It was a dating horror story, and I was like, oh damn. So then I was like, Well, what the hell am I talk about? So I had other topics, some that were topics I want to come back to. Others were stuff that people sent me. I only had a few that people sent. I haven't been getting a lot of dating horror stories. I don't know why, but I'm sorry, confessions. I haven't been getting a lot of confessions. Now, dating horror stories, yeah, but the confessions, no. And I'll bring them back. And I'm sorry, October was such a <clears throat> was such a dumpster fire for me, even though it was my birthday month. I didn't get an opportunity to really enjoy any of it. And everything was just, it was just everything all at once, so much going on. So I was just like, what the entire fuck? And I just was like, all right, I need to get my life together, get back on track, zen, find a moment, you know, just do something for me. And I saw this and I thought about it, thought about me last month in October and in and, and this particular post. So basically, like I said in the intro, the guy um, and, and Kaylee, Chris, I think Kaylee, Chris, something like that. You can find her, C-A-Y-L-E-E. She's on Insta and TikTok. She stitched his video because basically the guy was saying some stuff, a lot of stuff, and this isn't an unpopular opinion. This is an opinion that a lot of people have. Like when women lose weight, trust me, I've lost a lot of weight, gained it, whatever. You know what I mean? And every time people say something, it's like, it does, and it doesn't have to be about a man. When you lose a certain amount of weight or you gain a certain amount of weight, the people always assume, somebody is always out there, some know-it-all, some asshole, if you lose a lot of weight, oh, who are you trying to get sexy for? Nobody. Uh, or they'll say, damn, you okay? You've been drinking, smoking? What you, you've been do- Have you been doing something that would inspire this? Like, I couldn't just wake up one day and just say, you know what, I'm tired of being this weak, or I want to be healthy, or I'm tired of something. Lo and behold, if that's not a thing, because damn it, if I thought from, you know, wanting to do something for myself. And then when it's the opposite end of the spectrum and you gain weight 
and heaven forbid, I talked about this with the Lizzo thing, and you're trying to love your body the best way you can, you're already feeling self-conscious, and anyway. we're self-conscious people no matter what, don't matter if your body is fucking perfect, it doesn't matter if you have the, the most beautiful, most handsome face, there is something within all of us that makes us feel insecure or shitty about ourselves, no matter what it is, everybody, yours truly, and here you are trying to get your life together, trying to have some semblance of just not having to deal with depression and anxiety and just life itself. And then you're you're worried about, now you got to worry about your body on top of worrying about your health, if that is a problem. Not saying that being plus size is, is, is going to be the number one reason why you might have health issues. You're people that are like this, the, the size of the pen in my hand um, who have health issues. So I don't want to put that's actually a fat phobic or a body shaming type of uh, mindset to have because not everyone who's big has a health problem or it's not attributed to the health. It might be attributed to something else. Anyway, moving along. That being said, you gain weight. People always think, oh, you let yourself go. It's this, it's that, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes it's not always that simple of you just don't care and you just eating what the fuck up. First of all, a lot of this fucking foods. Oh, my God. It's like a strand of random hair in my eye. First of all, the foods that they eat are highly, highly processed and addictive. So you, before you even think about it and know, especially animal byproducts, uh, like not even just animal byproducts, just a lot of processed food. It could be processed vegetable food, like Impossible Burger or some shit like that. You know what I mean? A lot of the foods out here are highly processed and highly addictive. They have high amounts of sodium, high amounts of sugar. Sugar is highly addictive. And if you don't burn it off, it turns, you know, you eventually going to gain some weight. So naturally people start thinking oh she she gained weight because she don't care or she this or that whatever it's not always the case case in point we live in a society now that we go like the family dynamic is very different than it was 50 years ago 100 years ago whatever we don't sit down and have dinner together most families are co-parenting blended families there's you know what i mean the divorce rate in this country is really high on top of the fact a lot of people haven't gotten married to begin with or they just knocked up somebody and they you know it is what it is or it is just people to just raising their kids by yourself present company included so the the idea of having sitting down having a, a family dinner you know at the end of the day mom stayed home and cooked dad went out with the traditional family aspect and dynamic is not and it's con considered traditional because it's something that's kind of getting bleaker now i'm not saying there aren't families that don't do it but the likelihood of that is very rare nowadays because most households, everybody got to work. Because we live in a society, first of all, financially, it's hard for a, for a family of, let's just say, four. Two kids, mom, dad, heaven forbid if you got a pet. You know, it's hard for the one person's income and the one to be the stay-at-home mom. Usually, those chores, tasks are divided somewhere evenly, hopefully. Or, or there's just one person doing everything. Trust me, I did it all. And it was hard. Very I tried to, my best for the most part of my daughter's formative years, probably until high school, uh, to have dinner with her at least a couple times out of the week. We were, we're going to sit down and eat dinner, even if it's some shit that I ordered. And I'm, I'm going to get to that point, too, uh, because I want to see how you're doing. Talk about your day, how's school, how's life, you know, anybody bullying you, shit like that. Getting to connect with my child. And this is why we have a pretty much a good relationship now that she's an adult. That being said, because I was stretched so thinly, and in addition, I was taking care of my elderly grandma before she passed. So it was like, okay, I got my daughter, I got my grandma, I got a cat. Before she passed away, then we had a dog. Thank God Hazel was more helpful helping me with my grandma than most of the humans that was related to us. But I digress. So, you know, as she, before she got older, like, I'm trying to do all of this. I'm trying to be a mom, trying to be the provider, trying to be the disciplinarian, trying to be the nurse, trying to do all these things. It's very hard. People literally take it for granted or they'll say, oh, you know, another single baby. That shit is fucking hard. And the fact that a lot of women do it and do it as best as they can without their child having a lot of emotional damage and trauma is a significant feat because trust me, it is impossible. And I can't even say that I'm one of those parents that didn't have some emotional trauma raising my child or she didn't have any. And this is stuff that we're working on. But 
moving along. Saying the fact that doing all that, wearing all these hats, trying to do it all, and still have some time for yourself is very hard. And I really be hating when I hear people say, you know, shit about single moms. This shit is hard, you know. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying feel sorry for me. I'm not saying give me a sympathy or or your tears. Fuck that. I'm I I allow myself to be in this position. I didn't. I mean, I thought that her father was using protection. I asked him specifically. And he said yes. And okay, then why the fuck am I pregnant? And I didn't know because I was sexually in, inexperienced. I literally had not. He was the second person I ever been with. So that had to tell you something. Like the second man I ever been with. And I had no idea what the fuck was going on in there. So moving along. Doing it is, like I said, doesn't require, I don't mind requiring your, your sympathy or your cheers or whatever, but it's a tough job. And the fact that people, people demean the part, the, the homemaker part, the stay at home stuff. And you know, what's funny, you go to their houses. most of them don't even live by themselves. They live with someone else that cleans up after them. It's always the ones that don't even pick up their fucking drawers off the floor that are always sit or got clutter every fucking where to talk about oh, it's not that hard to keep a house up. Then why the fuck your house look like that? I've had people live with me. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, why is this shit still here? Now I understand you have late nights and you leave a couple dishes in the sink. Like, all right, I'm gonna wash this shit in the morning. But to just have shit everywhere, (laughs) like, come on, get it together. So just kind of downplaying and minimizing and, and, and just not appreciating that that other dynamic of, and then on top of that, not just keeping the house, but raising the kids too, making them productive parts of society and not fucking pieces of shit. You know what I mean? So that, those things are tough. So we, we minimalize that aspect. We minimalize everything that the female does in the home as if we can do it because most of the people that do, oh, well, then you turn around and let me hire a maid service. No, bro, do it yourself. Whatever. So moving on with this way, little statement, I'm just going off tangent right there. It got me to thinking about the fact that, okay, now as in, and this is how I gained a lot of fucking weight. I'm ordering our food, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, pizza, Chinese. I'm ordering all these unhealthy foods, which is why I gained a lot of weight. Now, I don't lost the weight. I got some skin and all this other stuff, and I'm working on that too. But um, all that that I was doing eventually i'm not as I, and even though i started getting that at some point i said all right i gotta start working out this shit ain't cool but um before i got to that point i was like damn i got on a scale went to the doctor the doctor was like yo you are 308 pounds and it just happened like one minute i'm like a size 12 you know playing soccer running around next day you know i injure myself I get, I tear my MCL. I can't play shit anymore. Um, and then next thing you know, I'm pregnant <laughs> and it just happens. And then fast forward like 10 years, I've gained so much fucking weight. Then I did. And then at some point I did get in relationships. They were stressful. What happens when you stress you cortisol and what ha- what does cortisol do? It makes you gain weight. So these, and then I'm not blaming anybody for this. I'm not taking it. I'm, I'm taking accountability for allowing it to happen. But at the same time, I'm just saying that if you're not, you know, time flies by so fast. And that's what anything you ever look back like, damn, what did I do with my life? Oh, damn. Such and such a time went by. I ain't took a vacation or whatever case. Man, time just goes by. We, we lose track of it. Even though it seems like the days are going by slowly, you look back like, damn, I'm 42 years old already. Like, what the hell? You know, so it just lo- it, just, it just eludes us. And before we really know it, if we don't take time to appreciate it, the, the moments. So that being said, you know, lo- gaining a whole bunch of weight over the course of it. It's like, oh, I'm, I, when I went on my last high school reunion, you know how many, all of us, a lot of us, not all of us, most of us, the ones that are still alive have gained a lot of fucking weight. It happens, men and women. Like, nobody looks the way the fuck they look in high school. Some actually go opposite way. More power to you. But to say, now that happens. And what Kaylee pointed out was a very important thing. She said, if your happiness is determined by the number that's on my scale, then we got a problem. Don't get me wrong. I know that men are visual and you you don't see the person you fell in love with or whatever. But that, at the end of the day, and any therapist will tell you, that is not the root of the issue of why you guys are having marital problems. It's not. 
it is a it might be the 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 match that sparks something or it might be the reason that you cling to as to why you want out chances are any man or woman that blames their significant other's weight as the reason why they want to leave they already wanted to go they was looking for an out because you can't sit up there and say i don't still love you and unless that person is like my 500 pound life and your dynamic and quality of life has changed you can't be sitting up the man because she gained like 20 pounds is she still getting up cooking for you or he doing this for you if you, you guys still going out having a good time yada yada because my grandpa when i look at his old pictures back in the day and i remember what he was like when i was young he was a big dude like he didn't got a little beer belly and everything my grandma still loved him my grandma had a little bit of cellulite as she got older shit fucking happens but at that point in their lives they had built something like that they considered happiness that that other shit didn't matter because what happens is they grew old together and gravity happened life happened you know metabolisms change things happen over the, and then don't know first of all women we gain weight for various different reasons our metabolisms fluctuate our, our hormones uh cause a lot of weight gain not saying that this isn't prevalent in men but the our reproductive systems are designed to make us gain and lose an exponential amount of weight over a short period of time and we don't take that into account uh, account we do oh no she just gained weight she let herself go she did it she don't even try to make me happy no oh, y'all know i almost said the n-word let me tell you something my weight gain and my weight loss is not for you and it's not for most women now moving to this next point that she said she sat up there and said you know why is it that a woman just can't go and just enjoy herself and not have to think about all that shit that's going on? Oops, my computer just going to log me out. You know, why can't she just do it? Like, why can't I just say, hey, you know, I'd want to go to the beach or I'm, I'm going to this party or my friend's getting married and I need to fit in this dress or whatever the case may be. Why is it that, that why could, can't that just be a feel good reason for her? Why is it that she's doing it for strangers? She Why can't? women unlike men we're not as, as ego driven like we don't have to get the nicest car to prove that we got the night or the nicest woman or the nicest lawn it's like men are always constantly competing with one another don't get me wrong us females do it too but we're not we're not doing it at that level not in my personal opinion because every time you see it like you ever watch american psycho homie was getting pissed off everybody had a better business card he's like oh my god the paper like or, or uh, what was it? Is it uh, the movie with Jim Carrey? Um, not me, myself, and Irene, but the other one he did when they went broke. <laughs> what is it, me, myself? Something me and Mary. So I, it's gonna come to me. But the point is, is, like, yo, he was getting mad about the homies' lawn, and it was just like, wow, you really mad that homie got a better lawn than you? Really? That's what we doing now. So that type of thing it happens you know you you it really does like this like oh he got a nicer car to me i'm sitting up here imdb and jim carrey movies because i am not going to sit up here if i'm with dick and jane i knew it was something so and the the, com the competition and i can't say all men are like that but there is some things where we we take our trophies and we're like this is a symbol of my success got to get that caddy that lincoln or that chain or to this or to that i have to prove i am somebody <sighs> and y'all fuss about us getting bbls the hypocrisy <laughs> but moving along so she brought that up and then it was like she mostly focused on the fact that he said why won't you do it to keep me happy how about why don't you lose with me personally when my doctor said you pre-diabetic that scared the fuck out of me. And I said, oh, oh, shit. First of all, I don't even like needles, doctor. How the fuck am I supposed to get myself insulin? I'm going to die because I'm afraid of needles. That's why I ain't got no tattoos now. You know how many times before I went and, 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 and cultivated my Hebrew Jewish culture, I wanted to get a tattoo? For the longest point in my life, I was like, oh, I'm going to get that tattoo. I had crazy sketches of tattoos I was going to get. I was like, yeah, I'm going to get angel wings on my back. I heard, I heard the oh I can't do it and I was done so you know what I mean like ser seriously like I can't 
understand this mindset. So <laughs> I'm just like, because I'm remembering back to that time I went to Warriors Tattoo Shop. I ended up getting my tongue pierced, and I think I had got my belly button pierced. But I remember that tattoo, and I wanted to get a tattoo. I said, yeah, I'm going to get the angel wings on my back. And the guy did ask me. I'm sorry to go back to this, because I lost my train of thought getting all carried away. He was like, you sure? This is kind of, this, He was like, I'm not going to be able to do this all in one second. And I was like, just, okay, never mind. But anyway. Neither here nor there. That part aside, I was afraid. Like, and don't get me wrong, being a diabetic is not an automatic, immediate death sentence. There are pl- plenty of people who were born with it um, or, or that d- d- developed type 2 diabetes at some point. And my mother's a diabetic. Her mother was a diabetic. So I'm like, okay, I know that I can manage this. This is not, I'm not, but it just felt so daunting because it was like, yeah, well, I used to be a fucking athlete. How in the world did I allow this to happen? So it got me to thinking, you know what, Rose? Get your life together. Lost the weight. Then I went and gained the weight. Sorry, my brain fell off my hand. That's what happens when you lose weight. So lost the weight, gained the weight back and forth. My weight has always yo you. And then on top of that, I've always been insecure about my weight because I've always had family saying, oh, you're gaining weight, blah, blah, blah. And then I was always bigger than everybody else. Like I was taller and bigger because I didn't know you know, the biology, being a foster kid and, and, and when my grand, my foster grandmother raised me. And even though I just never was, I didn't know any of my real family. And my mom kind of kept me from my dad because he had problems and she had problems and it was like shit. So I didn't know why I looked the way I looked outside of my face, looking like my dad's and a bit of my mom's. I had no clue. The fuck, how am I going so big? Why? So moving along, then eventually later on, I saw some parent like pictures of other people on both sides of my mom and dad's. Room. I was like, oh, now it makes sense. But anyway, that that led me to lose weight. And then eventually after um, like I started getting to the health fitness thing. Matter of fact, I just had my Zumba anniversary, 11 for me, four years. November 4th is when I got my Zumba thing. And then eventually I got my uh, certification in in fitness and then it was nutrition. Moving along. (sighs) Prior to 2020, really shining the light on where I was health wise. I I was kind of focused on health, but not as much. Like I would kind of uh, didn't kind of fall by the wayside. But when I really started taking it serious, when I really was like, I gotta leave this shit alone, I gotta leave this shit alone, I gotta stop doing this and doing that. You know what I mean? It really made me change my ways. I didn't fucking do it because I want to stun on some fucking ex that didn't want. Like if you didn't want me because I was fat. Fuck you. I don't get shit. I'm channeling all the Lizzo energy. Hate Lizzo or love Lizzo or whatever the case might be, you got to learn to love your body. And loving your body and loving yourself, like it says on my shirt, is not about, oh, just accepting the fact that you're unhealthy. It's not about that. It's about I love my body no matter what size it is. And if I feel that I'm not fit and I'm not healthy or there's something wrong with my body that can be changed by weight loss, then that's what I'm going to do. But if weight loss isn't connected to the health issue that I got, I'm not going to make, make it the center of my world. What I'm going to do is I'm going to love myself to be active. I'm going to love myself to eat foods that are good for me and beneficial for me. And then if the weight comes off, fine. If it don't, also fine. Guess the fuck what? I just want to be healthy. I just want to be happy. I just want to feel good in my skin. That's why I lost weight. So I say that to say this, not every fucking human being is doing something for the sake of spiting some guy. It's like, oh, if I get a cat, oh, you did that because you're trying to be a single cat woman. Oh, you don't, you, every time I say that I'm not for something or I'm doing something for me, like I like fucking animals. I've been like fucking Dr. Doolittle my entire life. I am the girl that tried to bring a fucking raccoon in the house when I was a child. I used to bring strays home all the time. So man or no man, woman or no woman, there's going to be fucking animals in this house. So I hope you don't got allergies. If you want to date me, don't be like, well, I don't like cats. Well, because I like cats and I like dogs. I'd get a bird, but I don't know how to take care of birds. So that's just me. I'm an animal person. I wanted to be a vet until my mom said, you got allergies and you're not good at science, so you shouldn't be a veterinarian. Well, damn, mom. Thank you for the vote of confidence. Even I was a little ass kid. I just knew. But honestly, 
what I knew now is that if one of them animals died on the table, I'd be, I'd be destroyed. Plus, I don't like the sight of blood. So that's, bam, that wasn't going to happen. Then it's us the females that get sex toys that do the job. The rose, oh my God, the rose for the last several years have had some men pissed off. Oh, you better get that, call that rose when the check engine light come on. Are you a mechanic? Are you going to fix it? Just shut the fuck up. So every time a woman does something, regardless, and it doesn't revolve around a guy, the first thing that an insecure man, this is not all men, insecure man will sit up there and say, oh, she's doing it to spite me. God damn it. I thought I work in a science museum and the whole time that I've worked in that science museum museum and they talked about planets and the sun and the stars and we've got connect with NASA and other scientific organizations. Last time I checked the fucking planet, the world, this world, the third rock from the sun does not revolve around men. It revolves around the sun. And if you're one of those problematic people that think, oh my God, my ego the entitlement, or whatever the word is, that goes for you and any other narcissist. Because that's a narcissistic way of thinking, of thinking that people do things to spite other people. Don't get me wrong. I have done some things to spite people, but it did not have nothing to do with me. It was like, oh, you want to do what to me? Vengeance. Yes. Been there, done that. Not saying that people don't do that. Don't. Not saying that people don't say, oh, you know what? I'm going to look good. I'm going to have sex. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to be the shit. And you're going to regret all of this. Yes, people think like that. But the majority of us fucking don't. And like I said, your happiness in a relationship, and this is, I don't like talking about relationships, but I hear it all the time. Why won't my husband do this? Why won't my wife do this? Da, 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 da. Oh, you don't want to do this to make me happy. All right, we need to sit down and get to the root of the problem first. Instead of pointing fingers and painting this picture that, oh, you are doing something to spite me even though you're not, let's point the let's let's dissect why and how we got here. Is that too much to ask? Because as a single person, I look at shit like this and I think, golly, I'm glad I got a rose and a cat. Cause I, I don't want to deal with these problems. But don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean I don't give up. I mean, I be trying. I, I, Well, no, I tried over the summer. I tried to have a fling. It didn't work out. Now I'm just back to square one thinking like, I don't want to deal with this shit. Now I'm planning a trip, a solo trip, and having some fun. And that's, I'm on my Stella got her groove back. Go find me a young 20-something. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I thought it'd be like, Mom, what are you, oh, my God, Mom. So, no, I'm not going to do that. Anyway. I'm going to go move along to the writer's reflection. And um, yeah. <laughs> but before I do, I just want to say one more thing. <sighs> Men, women. And, and I think the post, what triggered me most about the post was the fact that people were in their feels about this post. And no, that she didn't answer the question. And she's been hurt before. No, apparently bro been hurt before because he mad that his girl or a girl lost weight. Why you couldn't look like that when you was with me? Maybe you the reason why I looked like that in the first place. You ever think about that? You stressed me the fuck out so much. All I did was fucking eat comfort foods because you just stressed my life out. So yeah, I gained about 50 pounds and you were the reason for it. No, no, no. Because I'm like, keep that same energy. If you're sitting up there saying that a woman did not keep herself up she let herself go for the man she supposedly loved do you ever think about you might be the reason why she fucking fat you ever think about you the reason why she just sits up there and eats a quart of ben and fucking jerry's and a whole bunch of fried chicken because those processed as no good fucking foods tricks her serotonin levels into thinking that she's fucking happy because your ass stresses her the fuck out constantly and you got a cortisol levels going up so now she's feeling good from this process no good ass unhealthy food that ain't no good that's acidic not alkaline if you follow dr sebi however her cortisol levels are so fucking high she's just storing fucking fat because her body's thinking oh you know what i don't know what the fuck is going on is she fighting a bear or is she trying to run from a homicidal maniac we don't know we don't know. So, with that being said, I just saw that I ran out of storage on my camera. <sighs> P.
people, people, we got to stop really blaming women for a lot. I mean, women, you got to stop doing that with men. But like I said, this the video responses wasn't targeted towards men. They were the women. They were targeted towards men. So y'all can sit up there and say, oh, she hates the men. I, I, I got a few people that have said that to me. And then I got other people that have actually listened to what I fucking say on this show. I know who listens to my shit. Like I had, I posted like a clip from a previous video and someone's like, oh yeah, you're hating on men. Tell me you didn't listen to the episode without telling me you didn't listen to the episode because guess what? If you had listened to the episode, you would know for a fact that I don't hate men. And that episode wasn't actually bashing anybody. It was actually to say whatever was the point is, I can't remember. But just like this. I'm not bashing the men that think that the men, the you know, they have this egotistical mindset. I'm, I'm bashing the fact that people think seriously. It, it was a weight thing, and the reason why I actually posted it on that page, on my Zumba page, not on my Insomniac Great, was because she was talking about weight. Like, why can't somebody just fucking lose weight because their health is in or, is is in jeopardy? You know what I mean? Like, or why can't she just want to lose weight because she just wants to feel good about herself emotionally? Whatever the case might be, it ain't got to be about you. It ain't got to always have anything to do with you. So let's get on to the writer's reflection, writer's reflections, aka accountability corner. And but before that, I want to talk a little bit about a promo I got for you. Okay. Speaking of promos and shout out of the week, it was someone that sent me something uh, via DM on Instagram. So if you have a business that you want to spotlight or you have a page or something you want me to shout out on the podcast as well as on my social media, DM me. You can message me on Facebook. You can message me on Instagram. You can message me on Twitter while it's still free. You can message. I'm just joking. You can message me on even TikTok. So um, all of those pages, I do check my messages as often as I can. Um, I do check them daily. I might not get to the stuff that might get flagged or spammed right away. Sometimes I check that once a week. So if I'm not following you or if you're not on my close friends and it, it just kind of falls by the wayside, I will get to it. Just, you know what I mean? Let me know. Hey, I sent you something. I want to shout myself out. Anyway, this week's spotlight is the Fab Over 40 contest. Now, if you follow me on any social media, I've been talking about it, especially on Instagram and trying to promote it. Um, as of right now, I'm in the top 10. I think I'm in second place as of, as of me recording this. I'm not going to, as then when Monday come around, I don't know where I'm going to be at. Hopefully I'll be in number one, but top two, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it. So as of right now, <coughs> the next cutoff, excuse me, is November 10th next week. And, um, after that, that will just be the top five. So if I stay where I'm at now, I'm still safe. Then the group finals is the week after that, which is the week of the 17th. They are going to take just one from each group, yo. That'd be dope. I'm, like, kind of feeling, like, great. Like, I'm, like, oh, my God, I'm in second place. Oh, my God. Like, I'm hyped. So, anyway, what I need from you guys is to go to the link. I'm going to leave that information in the description box below. Go to votefab40.com slash 2002 slash Rose dash Lewis. And I'm going to put that there because I know that's a lot. But regardless of such, go there. When you get to the page, you scroll, it's going to say you can do a hope vote. A hope vote is a donated vote. You do donate to the National Breast Cancer Foundation. You can donate any dollar amount. It could be $1. It could be $100. Every vote goes towards a, uh, every dollar goes towards a vote for me. It is a donation to a non-profit, so it is tax deductible. Save that receipt or the email confirmation that they send you. Now, if you don't have money, totally understandable. Times is hard. You can do a free daily vote. That means every 24 hours, you can vote for me or, 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 and it's free. They are not going to charge you. The only thing is you have to verify who you are because we can't vote for ourselves and they want to make sure ain't nobody cheating people being fair. You do that and you you can verify yourself one of two ways with a Facebook account. Don't matter if you're active on Facebook. If you got a Facebook login, either you can verify it. They're not going to steal your information. You ain't going to be spammed and sending people weird ass messages after that. 
your account information is fine. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can, or if you don't have a Facebook page, you can do a verification through a credit card. What happens is the credit card will be, I think they hold a dollar and then they release it or a penny or some shit like that. Regardless of such, they're not going to charge your card. You will not have any outstanding, it won't be on your statement. Trust me, it's safe. Now, that being said, you can do either one of those things and, and that gets me a vote. That gets me top closer to the 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 top spot i just really want the spotcation more than anything like people like oh you want to do the cash prize yeah but i want i want the vacation i really just need a vacation i just want to get the fuck away and not have to worry about shit every day that i do so that's really what i want out of it now so if you can do that for me i would totally appreciate it for all of your those that have voted me in second place because it was like 60 people in my group alone i don't know how many groups there are but out of my group yeah it was like 60 people so um thank you so and the women of that that are supported by the national breast cancer foundation on behalf of all of them and the the national breast cancer foundation themselves we thank you i thank you so there's that that's the promo. Now onto the writer's reflection. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the Seagull Chronicles. I am your girl, R.S. Lewis. Um, I hope you enjoyed that episode. I'm I'm kind of laughing and in this weird mood because I accidentally clicked off. Um, the recorder so two things happened my the camera even though i haven't been posting these on youtube died it said insufficient storage and then the the thing on anchor that uploads this to spotify (laughs) i accidentally clicked x out of it i was like oh no my writer's reflective so now i gotta go back and say what i wanted to say or what i already said but um today we talked about men and women and losing weight and when they break up and why someone else's happiness revolves around another individual why the ego you know um people lose weight and gain weight for a whole lot of reasons um it's not always because you want to stun on someone or make them feel bad for leaving you or not liking you Sometimes we want to lose weight because we just want to feel better about ourselves or we want to get healthy. You know, it's not always because, oh, um, I just want to go and show off for a whole bunch of random people. Like, you know, what I, mean? I, that, I think if he wouldn't have said that part, it probably wouldn't have sounded as problematic. Like you could have just said, you know, I don't know why girls don't want to. Actually, the whole statement was problematic because it was just under the assumption that, you know, women gain weight or for whatever reason, because they let themselves go. Sometimes it's not always about letting yourself go. Sometimes it's stress, hormones. All of those things can be a reason why you gain some weight. And before you know it, time has flown by and you're like, oh my God. So we have to get out that mindset, that thing, you know, we have to stop projecting. And, you know, I I, I didn't mention it earlier, but a lot of times... When people project that energy, it's usually because it's something more deeper at the surface. You're not unattracted to your significant other because they gained some weight. You're not attracted to them because you are you're falling out of love for them for a whole bunch of reasons. And not because they're fat. It's not because they don't look like the way they did when you first fell in love. It's a whole lot of things. Let me tell you something. My grandparents, and I always use them as a catalyst because at the end of the day, like their relationship was not perfect it was tumultuous at times i'm sure but they had a pretty banging relationship as a matter of fact their relationship reminded me of the notebook i don't know if you ever seen that movie with ryan goslin and uh, amy not amy Adams. What's, i forget her name but it reminded me of them because my grandpa several was of way around my grandpa got cancer my grandma got gained weight. Her weight went up and down. Then my grandpa got okay with the cancer. Then it came back. Prostate cancer, that is. Then he got dementia. And it was like, my grandma didn't leave his side. She could have left his side at any point. You know, he, you know, funds got low. Sometimes they were, they were doing good. But he didn't leave her side. 
He wasn't looking for, she didn't leave him and he didn't leave her. They weren't looking for an easy out because they didn't want to be there in the first place. They didn't use that as an excuse. And just watching them makes me feel that there's hope. Because I, be hear, I hear a lot of these other podcasts and posts. Like even Kaylee, as much as I love her posts and they're very informative, sometimes she can come off a little angry, a little mad, a little irate. And, and duly noted, <laughs> I can see why. Because some of these guys really be in their feelings. And the fact of them being hurt and lonely and abused and humiliated, heaven forbid if that's by uh, the weaker gender, that really makes them lash out. And it's still a healing from that hurt. They project that onto every other female. Like, and it's sad. Just because one female hurt you or hurt other people around you doesn't mean that all females are like that. You know, it's billions of people on this planet. And not all of them are the same. Hate to break it to you. You know, when we say all men are the same. That is a problematic statement. When we say all women are the same, that is a problematic statement. Because not everyone is. They're not. And unfortunately, because my writer's reflections got deleted. And I didn't have any notes for this. I just was kind of going off the doom. Um, we have to heal. We have to move past whatever pain that is in the seat of our stomach. This is why a lot of times people ask me, why you stay single so long? A bulk of my singlehood was spent in reflection and healing, building my energy back up. Because I learned a long time ago, there were things that I was doing to, to appease other people, be it for spite or just because I wanted them to notice me, you know? And even sometimes I still kind of fall into that, oh, what am I doing? I had to, I had to slap myself out of that not recently, like a little recently, like what? I'm not a people pleaser anymore. I'm not that trauma person, but because I spent so much my my entire life doing it, sometimes that old habit comes back. It's just like people that quit smoking. Even if the smell of cigarettes makes them nauseous, every now and again that nicotine itch sneaks up or just the oral fixation. Every person that has some kind of addiction or some kind of trauma we gotta we have to be careful that we don't fall into those old tropes or those old things people with mental disorders have to take certain steps and 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 certain things that they have to do to make sure they don't fall into those same tropes and i'm no different so i just want you guys to know you know i've been there i'm not saying it from a place of judgment i've been on both sides of that aspect and when it comes to losing weight, I've lost weight, I gained weight. You know, I've had somebody that I didn't notice, or I didn't notice, or I stopped noticing, and they glowed up. I was like, ooh. Naturally, now my brain didn't think, oh, they did it for me, because I'm not a narcissist, but I really stopped and thought about it, like, damn, they really do look good. Why, why did I, why was I mad at you again? Why I let you go? So, you know, we have to get out of that mindset and that headspace, that toxic thinking that everything rolls around us. It doesn't. If your happiness is staked in something so trivial, then you need to redefine what makes you happy and find some healing in this world. So, anyway, guys, I want to thank you so, so, so much for tuning in. I did not have a promo for today. However, make sure you use, if you go to my merch store, for you, for my listeners and my subscribers, Use the promo code early bird, all one word. Um, and you're getting a preview of my um, Black Friday sale, which won't go live until obviously the week of Black Friday, which isn't about what two weeks, I think. So, yeah, definitely do that. I think Thanksgiving is in two weeks. Yeah. So, three, yeah, one, two, three. So, three weeks from now is Black Friday. So, definitely, you guys are getting that early early premium because i'm i'm probably not going to start that promo until like the 20th so definitely check that out and um or you can use ship for free either or i don't know why you would use ship for free but if you got a lot of stuff actually it probably would work for you but anyway not money out your pocket money out of mine um anyway take care guys thank you so much for tuning in again sorry for the absence that was october and uh, hopefully I'll get back on track. We only have a few more episodes left of this season. And then we are wrapping that up. Yes, season three. 
I think I'm gonna change the formatting for season four. I'm, um, I've noticed that I haven't done YouTube videos, and I think I might keep it that way. YouTube, doing, trying to do a weekly YouTube video with my schedule. I'm doing juicing, the classes. I'm doing everything, and right now I am house hunting to get the hell out of North Philly, and um, I just don't have the time. And I, I, I want to get back. To, I wanted to get back to my writing. I miss that the most. So. Sorry, guys, uh, but I will be posting something to YouTube because I don't feel behind the algorithm this sad. So stay tuned for that. If you're actually following me, you can follow me on my uh, insomniac writer, no underscore, and that's that. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Let me turn this off. Thank you for tuning in. I love y'all. Be awesome to you, but above all else, love yourself. I am sad and so dark.